So what's right about religion and what's wrong about religion? Well, let's start with the right part. <laughs> religion is right when it encourages people to worship God. Now, let's leave alone for a second the conception of God <laughs> that it offers to people. But in general, religion is right. There is a God, you know, and the proof that God exists is very simple. You exist. Who created you? Who, in fact, created the whole world with such a wonderful thing as living creatures that reproduce themselves automatically? Huh? We can't even build a robot that can build a copy of itself. That's called a von Neumann machine. And it exists only in theory, only in imagination, because nobody can build it. <laughs> only nature, only God can build a set of machines that go on reproducing themselves automatically. Only God or nature can build a universe that is self-regulating and self-adjusting. Uh, no, no machine can do this. No technology that, that humans develop can do this. We're simply not intelligent enough. Only God can do. Only God has done. So just see, the fact that you exist and that the universe exists is sufficient proof of God. Now, of course, some rascals will always argue against it, but who cares? They're not intelligent. Once you have a convincing piece of evidence, that's all you need. So God exists, therefore we should worship God. I mean, for example, our bodies are one, organized, whole. And every cell in the body, if it's healthy, acts in cooperation with the whole body. And if they don't, then that's a disease and we have to treat it and root it out. So similarly, in the universe, those creatures who acknowledge the existence of God and abide by the rules of God and worship God, they're like the cells in the body that cooperate with the whole body. They're healthy, they're beneficial, they're good. So religion teaches this kind of cooperation with God, and this is good. This is very good. Another thing that religion does, generally speaking, is give rituals, and practices, principles that increase our good karma. In fact, religion would not exist. It would have gone away thousands of years ago if it didn't do this. There has to be some benefit. Otherwise, nobody's going to accept it. Nobody's going to maintain it. Huh? And certainly nobody is going to propagate it to others. Okay, so that's what's good about religion. That's the really good part of it. Now, what's the bad part? <laughs> well, if you've been watching this channel for any time at all, you already know. <laughs> the bad thing about religion is that it gets us to believe in things. And faith is necessary in life but only to the extent where it gets us to do the practice and get the result. It's just like if you're taking chemistry or physics in school. You only have to believe the theory enough to get you into the lab and perform the experiment. 
once you do the experiment, then you know that it's true. So the same thing is about religion. Once you do the experiment, once you do the practices, once you experience the benefits and the results of religious life, then you don't need faith anymore. You have experience, you have knowledge. But many uh, religious institutions rely on faith alone. This is the problem. They don't show you how to prove that faith, how to confirm it, how to experience it for yourself. So you're left with only, you know, software. <laughs> it doesn't really have any practical use. Well, there might be some psychological benefit in thinking that, okay, now I'm right with God or something like that, or now I'm a good person. Uh -huh. It, there's a saying that uh, virtue is its own reward. And of course, the problem with virtue is that it's something external to you. It's not the self. Virtue is a set of values imposed from outside by religion or society or so on. So the problem with that is it's dispensable, it's disposable, it's changeable. It is not integrated with the nature of reality. See, the concept of Dharma is so wonderful, the Vedic concept, because Dharma means what is that really exists, not just words, not just beliefs, but reality, and how it is. Not only does it exist, how does it exist? What are its qualities? What are its activities? What are its uh, nature? What is its nature? And finally, why it is the way it is. So there are three levels in Dharma. What is, how it is, and why it is the way it is. This does not require faith at all. You can simply observe. And this is another problem with religion. It doesn't generally educate people how to observe and how to understand their existence. So here we are teaching four levels of consciousness and teaching four levels of spiritual development based on that and so on. This allows you to observe yourself in the different levels of consciousness and actually understand where you are in the course of development of consciousness. But ordinary religion doesn't do this. In fact, most religions, if they address consciousness at all, it's only to say that you are consciousness. Well, okay, so what? <laughs> and not give you the qualities of consciousness, the activities of consciousness, and the results of those different activities. So this is a failure of religion. And another problem with religion is religious organizations. Now, we've been over this many times on this channel, that an organization is not a reality. It's not what the Buddha would call a dhamma, a real thing, an existence. It's only a belief. I believe in the existence of this organization. And so then I and the other people who share this belief start acting as if it's true, acting as if the organization is real. It's like children playing, huh? Children play, okay, let's play house. You're the daddy, <laughs> you're the mommy, I'm the little baby, right? And then they, they play believing that there is really a house, a household, a family, right? But it's just kids. In the same way, a religious organization is a bunch of people acting on certain beliefs and holding those beliefs in common. But it's just a belief. You can't show me a religion. You can't show me a church. 
oh yeah, there's a building and there are people coming and going in the building, but that's not a religion. That's not an organization. It's an abstract concept. Simply words, huh? And the people who believe in them. So it's better than nothing, I suppose. But the problem is that anytime there's a concentration of power, that power is exploited and misused. It's human nature. People are greedy. They don't just accept the benefits of whatever role they play. They try to maximize them, push them beyond the actual limits. So, you know, we read about scandals in this church and that church, and this is going on. But why does it go on? Because there is an unnatural concentration of power in the hands of a few people, the elites or the ministry or whatever, the, you know, whatever you want to call it. And so they misuse that power because of greed. It's human nature. If you create the situation, the result will happen automatically. Uh, the Buddha taught dependent origination, paticca samuppada that as long as you create a condition for something, then it will happen. For example, fire. If you create the right conditions for fire, you have some dry, flammable material, uh, maybe a little wind coming and a spark to get it going, and boom, you have a fire. But then what happens? Eventually the conditions change, and when they do, the fire, we say, goes out. Well, where does it go? See, and similarly, we might have something like a religion or some kind of organization, or somebody might be in a position of power. But as soon as conditions change, poof, it's gone. That means it never really existed in the first place. That which is temporary, that which is impermanent, is actually unreal. It's maya. It's an illusion. So people are sold a bill of goods, you know? They're sold this package of beliefs and then told that in the future, huh, we give you a post-dated check. <laughs> you will get salvation. You will get this. You will get that. In the future, after you die, in the meantime, you have to follow what we tell you to do. See, this is a swindle. This isn't honest. This is cheating. This is trickery. So don't go for that. Don't patronize these religious institutions and organizations because it's simply a setup for you to be exploited by them. So take the parts of religion that are good and leave the parts that are bad. <laughs> and then you can be very happy to develop your consciousness to the point of ultimate enlightenment. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.